Hey, it's Nikachu, and today we are going to take a look at the unluckiest game of magic ever caught on camera. Sure, people complain all the time. I got mana flooded. I got mana screwed. Oh, you got your sideboard cards, but I didn't get my sideboard cards. But believe me, nobody has ever lost like this before. But before we look at the match, let's see what each player is playing. In the right corner, we've got Hardened Scales Affinity. Using the enchantment for one green, if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are put on it instead. Featuring a bunch of robots with counters on them, as counters get added to them, they can storm the opponent for a ton of damage. And in the left corner, we have Titan Chef. The strategy for this deck is to ramp up to seven or more lands so you can activate Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, which says, Whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if you control at least five other mountains, you may have Valakut the Molten Pinnacle deal three damage to target creature or player. And ideally, you'll finish them off with Scape Shift, which lets you sacrifice all your lands and replace them with a single Valakut and the rest being mountains. And with six mountains, you can deal 18 damage to one-shot your opponent. This sudden and burning explosion is no different from what you'd experience in the bathroom of a Taco Bell. So how hard could it be? Let's take a look at the action. Looks like a mulligan here for Lauren Carag Caragaro and a card to the bottom, so potentially a bit of an awkward draw for him, but turn one hardened scales, is that the best start for this deck? It must be close. Uh, well, I mean, the best start probably involves uh, some Mox Opals as well on, uh, on turn one, but uh, uh, it is uh, close to the dream start for this deck. Hardened Scales is uh, the engine that makes all the other cards in the deck tick. So your draws where you do have the enchantment are so much better than, uh, than all the other ones. Arcbound Worker, suddenly a 2-2 two -two for one with a little bit of upside with in upside, terms of that yeah. modular ability. When it dies, oh. it gets to move three counters onto another yes. artifact creature, but only the one land. This might be the opening that Lauren Caligaro needs. Yeah, this, uh, it started off really well on turn one for uh, Ben Sack, but uh, turn two has not been as yeah. kind uh, to him. I did spot Mox Opal in his hand, so if Laurent gives him uh, an opportunity to maybe resolve another artifact and then uh, you know, be able to get some mana out of the, the Mox Opals, potentially this turn could be quite explosive, but missing that second land drop definitely is uh, a big hamper on the development. All right, just an attack for two from Arcbound Worker. I mean, there weren't too many cards that were going to pump it pre-combat. Well, sometimes you can uh, just go off with Arcbound Ravager and uh, uh oh, no play at all. That yeah. does not bode well for uh, for Mister Sec. Um, yeah, that is just what you have in to a accept. Way. Yeah, ridiculous in as uh, in like a very powerful uh, way. Yes. Yeah. So. Search for tomorrow here, potentially into another spell from uh, Caligaro. If he's able to deal with Arcbound Worker this turn, I feel like it's definitely all over. If all he's doing is, well, <laughs> he's able to do slightly better. This is a slaughter. Engineered explosives blowing up both Hardened Scales and Darkbound Worker. So as the game has played out so far, Ben Sex's Hardened Scales Affinity deck is choked on man. In fact, he's not doing anything at all. He's able to put one creature in play off of one land, attack for a few turns, and that's it. And he's supposed to be the explosive aggro deck. And then we got Lauren Caligaro on Titan Shift, just comfortably making land drops, ramping up, and then he plays Engineered Explosives, cracks it to send Ben Sec back to the Stone Age. Ben's board is more empty than my bank account after buying Secret Lair fetch lands. That's price gouging. This mulligan worked out pretty well here for Lauren Caligaro. Six lands in play. Finally, Ben finds his second land, but it may be too late here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben took, uh, took a gamble. Um... And maybe one that seems reasonable with his deck, because having hardened scales in your opening hand is worth so much, and perhaps even worth the risk of not drawing uh, another land in your next two draw steps. But uh, certainly didn't work out for him. And now uh, he was hoping to catch Laurent with you know one business spell and uh, nothing else. And if but, this uh, is a land, this is game over. Yeah, because Tatsi's put Ben Sek down to 18 life.
So Ben Thought seizes his opponent and finds impending doom. Staring down is a primeval titan and a scape chef. Thought sees is about to put him down to 18 life, which means one more land and that scape chef can one shot him to death. But technically, Lawrence still needs the seventh land. So he takes the primeval titan, which can be cast for six mana. Primeval Titan is as good as lethal because whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, it searches your library for two lands, you put it directly on the battlefield, it will dig for the Valakuts and attack, find more mountains and deal tons of damage. But how on earth can Ben win from here? Because all the scape ship player needs is a seventh land and the game is over. And every single card in the deck is either a land or a card that can find a land. Like another Primeval Titan or a summoner's pack to find the primeval titan or search for tomorrow far seek secure a tribe elder any land drop and half the deck are lands trying to dodge all those top decks is harder than trying to dodge snow during a snowstorm lawrence is just one card away from winning and ben doesn't even have any board at all to make a comeback trying to win this game for ben is harder than trying to fix plumbing with the water on no lands I think he's actually, he might think he Still might be alive. at 16 because he's, he also had to play the Overgrown 2. Oh yes, that is true. Yep. Yeah. So it may be that our life totals are just a little bit uh, on the fritz. No. So here comes Dark Confidant. I guess once you're already a little bit down, you might as well. I mean, there, there's a big difference between 19 and 18 when playing against Cape Shift. But any life totals below 18 are not all that relevant anymore. Well, Lara is not drawing lands. Uh, and also not drawing uh, mana ramp cards. Also not drawing Primeval Titan, he would have played that. So my guess is that Laura has a bunch of... Artifact removal? Like, like if it was a Bolt or something, I, I, I would assume he would have just cast it on the, on the Dark Confidant. So yeah, maybe Artifact removal. And if that is indeed the case, then uh, uh, good old Bob Mahar is uh, showing why he is uh, a good sideboard card against decks with Artifact removal, because they dodge the, the hate cards that people bring in. Horizon Canopy, a slightly painful land potentially, but at least it can draw cards as well. It's an optimistic outbound Ravager! <laughs> um, Fluttershy from the chat is asking, is Hardened Skills a real deck? Uh, well, from this particular game uh, of Bensec, you might not really think it is all that powerful, but uh, yes, it is a real deck, it is a competitive deck, and it actually put uh, an astonishing three players uh, in the top eight of the Magic Online Championship Series uh, recently, which is a highly competitive uh, online event. Um, it is a real deck in modern, and pretty sweet and fun to play too. Finally, Mox Opal getting enough artifacts in play to be able to do something. Immediately getting sacrificed to Arkbound Ravager, having generated a little bit of mana in the meantime. Is there another Mox Opal here to potentially cast a two mana spell? There is, all right. And a walking ballista. Well, uh, imagine that Hardened Skills was still on the battlefield. Uh, if it were, maybe Ben Sec could have actually have cobbled together a win uh, at this spot. I mean, even if he puts down a Hardened Scales this next turn, it might still be possible. What is what, what is Laurent drawing? He, he has six easy. lands and a scape shift in hand. And three cards that are not lands, not ramp cards. Probably not Primeval Titan either, not not a sweeper. What could he even what could he even I mean, be? Surely this isn't just a slow roll, that wouldn't be fair. Also, slow rolling with a sorcery against this deck feels very dangerous. I mean, I guess he could be drawing scape shifts. He could have like four scape shifts in hand. So they took a page out of Star Trek. You eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Yeah, I, regardless of how this game goes, I really hope that we get a chance to see a little bit more of what's going on in Lara's I'm, I'm hand really game. curious. So Hangerback Walker joining alongside Arkbound Ravager. And yeah, suddenly we've got a wide old board here for Ben Sec. And I, I do believe that he will be able to uh, assemble lethal here um, by just sacrificing a bunch of artifacts to the Arkbound Ravager, putting Laurent down to uh, a relatively low life total, and then afterwards potentially moving them over to uh, Walking Ballista. Um, you could even play around the Lightning Bolt, potentially if you uh, go really, uh, really deep and keep the other Ravager in play so that you can respond to, uh, to a Bolt. It's 
So that was sacrificing Arkban Ravager to Arkban Ravager, but then moving a counter onto Walking Ballista with the Arkban Ravager that was sacrificed's ability. Yep. Uh, but this should also uh, probably be uh, be enough. Oh, it was four, four scape shifts. shifts. Oh my Incredible. goodness. Incredible. You can see the look on Ben Sex face. He dodged four <laughs> different bullets there, all at the same time. So do you know how unlucky that Titan Shift player was? So Frank Karsten ran the numbers, and that Titan Shift player was 99.99% to win that game and match. The odds of top decking three scape shifts in a row was only 0.0062%. That is one in 16,215. So the next time you get mana screwed, you're flooding out, you're mulliganing down to four, you're getting hosed by sideboard cards. Just remember, if you think that's bad, it's nothing compared what happened to this guy. Watching this game play out is so strange because you thought that the Titan Shift player was a lock. How could they lose? But in the end, it wasn't meant to be. Like when you find a date online and then next thing you know, they've deleted their dating profile. Well, that's our video for today. If there is some ridiculously improbable nonsense that ever happened to you in a game, let me know in the comments section below. Smash like for good luck, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, or you'll never win a die roll again.